Okay, hello friends. One more projectile motion problem. This one, this one's for Madison. This was uh, my daughter's high school uh, physics class. She had this problem. So let's work it out. I've got a truck with watermelons on the back of it. It comes up to a bridge. The bridge is washed away. One of the watermelons falls off the truck and rolls off of the cliff here at 10 meters per second. So it's going to go to splat right down here somewhere, right? Here, let's put a little, little red, bleh, okay? There's where the watermelon explodes, okay? And they wanna know, for this point right here where it hits the ground, what are the X and Y coordinates of that, okay? So can we solve this problem? It's a little bit funky because the ground is parabolic, right? It's going away. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, I think the equation that we need to use is over here. It's constant velocity. It is a projectile motion problem because it is a falling object. It's not accelerating except in one direction, and that is gravity, right? So I think this is going to be the money equation right there. So let's use that equation. And again, we're going to break this velocity up or this, this motion into two directions, okay? So this thing has... We're going to do a, a velocity or a position in the uh, y direction and in the x direction. We'll call this vx and we'll call this vy. Now, since this thing is rolling straight off the hill, you know it has vx is 10 and then vy is 0. But again, let's work this position in, in two directions. We'll work the position in the X, and that'll come up with the X coordinate, and we'll work it in the Y, and that'll come up with the Y coordinate. So let's see if we can do it. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> so the equation, we'll do the, we'll do the X first, okay? So let's just say that that's positive, okay? So the equation is S equals S naught plus V naught T plus one half A T squared. Okay, here we go. So in the X direction, okay, the initial, pos I mean the final position, do we know what the final position is? I don't know. It's just some X value, isn't it? X equals initial position is zero. We'll call that zero because it says that this is the vertex right there. Okay, so we'll call that zero. Uh, the initial velocity in the X direction is... 10 meters per second, so 10 T plus one half, what's the acceleration in the X direction? You know what, it's zero. Okay, so that whole entire term right there is just gonna go away. And we're left with X is equal to 10 T, okay? So there's, there's one equation, we'll put a little one by that guy. We need another one, so let's do the same thing but let's do it for the y direction, okay? So here we go, this is, we'll call that positive now. So this was the x direction. This is gonna be the y direction, okay? So here we go, s is equal to s naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. Okay, so what is the final position? The final position is like negative y, isn't it? Okay? I don't know, it's some y value. What's the initial position in the y direction? We'll call that zero, okay? So there's a zero there. The initial velocity in the y direction is zero, so that whole term is gonna go away, right? And then what about this term here? Plus one half acceleration, negative 9.81 meters per second squared times t squared. So that whole thing is going to turn into what? Y equals um, 4.905 T squared, right? That negative and that negative will cancel out, right? Divide the whole thing by negative one if you want to. Okay, so there's equation number two, okay? So there's an equation for X, there's an equation for Y with time in there, okay? Now, do we have any other equations that have X and Y in them? Oh, you know what? We do, right there, okay? So let's do this. Let's solve this equation for T. So T is equal to X over 10. 
And let's plug that in in T right here so I get Y is equal to 4.905 times X over 10 squared. Let's see, can we do that? Uh, yeah, we can do that, right? Because that just turns into, what, point zero four nine zero five, right? That's a that's going to be 100. So that divided by 100, move the decimal over two places. Whoop, whoop. You get that times x squared, okay? So there you go. There's one equation for y. There's another equation. Now let's take this guy and make him solve him for y. Right? So y is equal to, what, 16x. Let's take the square root of both sides. So 4x to the 1 half. Okay? Now I can set these two equations equal to each other. Right? Where am I going to go? Oh, no. Let's go over here. How about this? Uh, 0 0.04905 x squared is equal to 4x to the 1 half. I don't know that, you know, I don't know how to do that. Maybe I do, but I'll, how about this? Let's just square both sides, right? So this would become what? 16x and this would become x to the fourth. And what's that? On point, oh, point zero four nine zero five. Uh, squared equals zero zero two four. Okay, divide both sides by an x, right? So x cubed is equal to. I can divide the sixteen by oh oh two four. So sixteen divided by answer sixty six fifty point three. Um, and then I can cube root that, right? Oh, I don't know if I know how to do that. 3, cube root button, answer equals 18.81. So x equals 18.81 meters, okay? There's one of the answers I'm looking for. That's the x value. How are we going to get y? Well, that ought to be pretty easy. We could do it right there, right? So I could take 18.81 and do the square root of that. Square root of the answer. It's 4.336, that's the square root of x, and then multiply that by 4 times 4 equals 17.34. So y equals negative 17.34 meters. Okay? So the thing goes 18.8 that way and 17.34 that way in the y direction, and that's where the watermelon splatters. Can we do it? We can do it.